you pick and choose what you choose to be influenced by, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I, my, I would apply that to say that in some areas I am in places that you already want to believe something that I am influential. In places where you don't want to believe something, I'm not. That's my read, right? Mm -hmm. Which I'm cool with. Okay, so we talked about the Doppler effect. We applied it to light, right? So if we travel towards a light source, it gets blue shifted. If we travel away from a light source, it gets red shifted. And we move on to the next slide, which is dealing with something called bow or bow waves. And you probably all experienced this, like if you go out boating on a, a lake or whatever, right? And you happen to be on a canoe or something, and here's one of these motorboats or speedboats that goes past you, right? What happens to you exactly, right? You get and basically what's happening is there's this V-shaped wave that's extending out from the front of the, right? From the front of the boat that's going past you, that's then rocking your world, if you will. So, illustration of bow waves. Okay, here's a bug on top of water. Each time the bug, okay, the bug is just standing on the surface of the water. You know there's some bugs that can stand on water, right? Because the surface tension is strong enough to hold the bug up. So, the bug is just doing this, it's bouncing up and down. So each time it bounces up and down, it sends out a wave going out like this. Now the bug decides it's going to start walking in a certain direction. So, here, here was its first position. It bounced and st took a step. And it sent out a wave that now has expanded all the way to wave number one, out here. Then it has moved here and it took a step. So, second wave moved here, t took a step. Third wave, right? So, wherever it is, it's the center of the wave that it has sent out. So, the fourth wave is the smaller here and now it has taken a step here. The bug has reached the edge of the wave. Now, as the bug speeds up, increases its speed of movement, at some stage it'll catch up with the waves, the rate at which the waves are traveling outwards from its position where it emitted the wave. When that happens, all of these will pile up. You'll have a pileup of these, the waves. So, if the velocity of the bug is less than the velocity of the wave, you'll end up with a situation like this, where the waves, right, the origin of each of these waves is shifted to the right, but the, the waves are not piling up. If the velocity of the bug is equal to the velocity of the waves, then the waves pile up. If the velocity of the bug exceeds the velocity of the waves, you end up with a situation like this, where new waves are created further out than the position of the previous, previously created wave. And if it greatly exceeds, velocity of the bug greatly exceeds the velocity of the waves, you end up with a situation like this. Now, if you draw a tangent to this, like an envelope line to these waves, you'll end up with what's called a bow wave. And this, we will see on the next slide, applies to supersonic planes. Now, a bow wave is the V-shaped disturbance made by the object moving across the liquid surface at a speed that's greater than the wave speed. So that's the illustration of that. And with that, we move to the next slide. Okay. So, if you happen to have a plane that's traveling, okay, here's a picture of the plane, here's the landscape, picture of the plane, it's traveling at greater than the speed of sound, you know that we experience something called the sonic boom, right? And this is why a lot of countries outlaw faster than sound travel of planes above them, right? And um, so supersonic pla travel is not permitted in a lot of countries. It may not be issue if you travel high enough up, right? But if you travel at greater than the speed of sound at low altitudes, the sonic boom is big enough to, uh, like if you're close enough, it can shatter glass windows and all that kind of stuff, right? Sorry? So what is happening with the sonic boom is something like this. Here, if you look at pressure as a function of time, as the plane is traveling forward, it's piling up pressure in front of it. So here, you end up with a high pressure zone, and the stuff that's piled up in front of it to first approximation creates a low pressure zone at the tail end of the plane, which ends up with a low pressure zone. So this is just like an explosion, right? What does an explosion do? It sends out a high pressure pulse followed by a low pressure pulse, right? So the high pressure pulse going out is what we hear is this huge sound when something explodes. So the same thing here, high pressure pulse, and if this is strong enough, it can do a lot of damage. It can like shatter your eardrums and all that kind of stuff, right? So that is the shock wave here. 
and it's basically the same principle as the bow wave that we talked about. In this case, what's happening is the plane is traveling faster than the speed at which sound is able to travel through the atmosphere, which is ballpark of 343 meters per second. So by the time you say one Mississippi travels 343 meters, so you say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, and sound has traveled a kilometer, which is ballpark of about 0.6 miles. All right? So the shock wave is the cone-shaped disturbance made by the object that's moving at supersonic. Super means greater than sonic is sound, speed of sound. Supersonic speed through a fluid, in this case through the air. And the sonic boom is a loud sound that results from the incidence, right, the impact of that shock wave. Why does the shock wave say that it speeds through a lift, a fluid? Because sound is a pressure wave. Sound is a pressure wave in a fluid. So, and when we say fluid, it includes gases. It's not just liquid. Okay, so air then? Yes. Okay. So the fact that you're able to hear me, what's happening is that my vocal cords, as they, as they vibrate back and forth, they're creating a pressure wave that's high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So that wave is traveling through the air, through the molecules, and then your eardrum, the pressure wave is, is causing the molecules next to your eardrum to oscillate back and forth, high pressure, low pressure. So like when we talk about like doing experiments before, like in a, mm -hmm. you know, a tube that doesn't have any mm -hmm. air in it or whatever, there would be no way, there's no sound in there. That is correct. Okay. Yes, good point. So for sound to travel, it has to travel through a medium. Sound can travel through a solid. If we completely evacuate this room, you hold your breath and you put your ear to this table, and if I were to knock on the table, the sound would travel through the table and come to your ear. Mm -hmm. Now, sound travels through water, so if you happen to be swimming out in the ocean and uh, a whale sings, the odds are that you'll be able to hear it, right? And uh, so it travels through a liquid, it also travels through a gas. Anytime that you can have molecules that oscillate back and forth, right? You can end up with a... Uh, so in a vacuum, you can still like, send sound through a table? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't hear it like this. What would happen is, if you were to... Now, she would not, most likely not hear your sound, but he would feel a vibration coming through mm -hmm. here. And he may, depending on how close his eardrums are to this, the eardrums will vibrate to different extents. So I, if he's, I remember um, mm -hmm. early high school, okay. uh, my science teacher did an experiment where mm -hmm. he put a glass jar on the table and he had a radio okay. and a recording device in it. Mm -hmm. And he set it to record and was playing the radio and he evacuated all the air mm -hmm. and it stopped recording. So, well, it it stopped picking up anything because they okay. didn't pick up anymore. Okay. I thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some very low level of sound would come through, like from the radio down to the bass, mm -hmm. through to, the, to yeah. the recording unit, but it just means that the sensitivity of the recording unit was so low that it wouldn't mm -hmm. pick that up, right? So along these lines, so if any object travels faster than the speed of the wave, you're going to have the sonic boom, right? I have a question for you guys. Do you think it's possible for light, for this to happen with light? Sorry? A pulse? I'm looking for something like a sonic boom. Remember here that with the sonic boom, the plane is traveling faster than the speed of sound. So for light to experience a similar phenomenon, you have to have some ob material object travel at faster than the speed of light. Is it possible? Can't tell you. Uh, actually, we already have an answer to that question. You're right, they're still looking for the Higgs boson. I mean, there's some speculation that they found it, but uh, it remains to be seen, right? Or not that they found it, but they have seen evidence. They evidence that suggests that you can infer that it exists, okay? Which is how all science is done. Um, so you'd have to have a material object that can travel faster than the speed of light. Is that possible? Have you all heard that material objects can travel faster than the speed of light or cannot travel faster than the speed of light? I don't think I've ever heard either way. You have not heard either way? My initial thought, based on not knowing anything about it, would say that there is a possibility. Okay. Part of what Einstein was about was this concept that... Yeah. Now, one of the the statements there in the theory is basically that a material object cannot travel faster than the speed of light with a certain caveat. And so far, 
it hasn't been disproved, correct? That is correct. No, okay. So obviously, okay. So you don't have the you don't have the background. Some classes uh, there are individuals who have come across this background. Okay, so if you were to assume that light, that no material object can travel faster than the speed of light, then there can be no equivalent to a sonic boom with light. But there's a caveat. The caveat is the speed of light changes when it moves in a different medium compared to vacuum. So in a vacuum it travels at a certain speed, but when light comes into your swimming pool, it slows down a whole bunch. Right? So in your swimming pool it's traveling at like two-thirds the normal speed of light. The photons get like totally slowed down, like put the brakes on, screech! Right? So there is something like a sonic boom with light, but what happens is, let's say there's a cosmic ray, a particle, proton, electron, something that's, a, that's traveling along, zipping along at like 80% of the speed of light, right? In a vacuum, it's still traveling slower than the speed of light. So the, the proton or the electron, okay, is traveling at 80% of the speed of light, and here the photon's whizzing past, right? But what happens when this ray comes and hits a swimming pool? What happens is, the light photons that come and hit the swimming pool, they totally slow down. This electron doesn't realize that it's supposed to slow down a whole bunch. So it keeps traveling merrily along at 80% of the speed of light in a vacuum. So all of a sudden now, once the electron or the proton or whatever the cosmic ray is, once it has passed into the water, it is now traveling at a speed that's greater than the speed of light in that medium. So what happens? What happens is you end up with the equivalent of a sonic boom. Which is just a it's, it's a flash of light. But because at such a small scale, it would just be like Correct. a little twinkle, right? Yes, but you can actually measure it in a laboratory and it's called Cherenkov radiation. Is that the same that's going into like the solar panels? I'm sorry, what? Is it the same energy going into solar panels or no? Um, so the idea behind the solar panels is a photon coming into the solar panel and getting absorbed. So it's similar, but not exactly the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and end this. 